At the dawn of the 21st century, the number of fugitives wanted by the FBI soared to record levels. Federal agencies were overwhelmed with unsolved cases. Fugitives became more dangerous and unpredictable, and the top 10 most wanted were increasingly linked to terrorism. This emergence of worldwide terror networks caused unprecedented casualties abroad and at home. To deal with this crisis, Congress orders the creation of CIFR, the Criminal Interdiction and Fugitive Recovery Task Force. Hosted by the State Department, CIFR's primary objective is to hunt down the world's most elusive and dangerous fugitives and bring them in alive. Hand-picked by the military to lead CIFR's Alpha Team, Lieutenant Jake Siever is a veteran of counterterrorism and urban warfare. In 1999, a covert mission was launched to hunt down and capture top Al-Qaeda leaders. Siever was assigned to this mission on the Afghan-Pakistani border. Lucas Benjamin Aker is the suspected leader of the Utah-based Patriots Militia Group. He is believed to be the main supplier of black market arms and explosives to drug cartels in Latin America, including the notorious Perez Cartel. Aker is alleged to have manufactured several suitcase nukes for sale to drug cartels and terrorist groups. Aker should be considered armed and extremely dangerous. Dr. Al Nur is the special weapons expert of the Al Qaeda terrorist organization. He is personally responsible for training hundreds of bomb makers at a training camp in Afghanistan. Al Nur is educated in nuclear physics and is alleged to have purchased several suitcase nuclear devices for Al Qaeda. Proceed with extreme caution. Aman Aziz is the right hand man to Osama bin Laden, head of the terrorist group Al Qaeda. Aziz is responsible for delivering bin Laden's orders to terrorist cell planners throughout the world. Aziz keeps his contact secret and his capture could provide crucial information as to the whereabouts of Al-Qaeda terror cells. Aziz should be considered armed and dangerous. Ali bin Asi is a high-ranking member of the Al-Qaeda terrorist group and has been implicated in dozens of bombings around the world. He's suspected to be operating an underground terrorist cell somewhere in Paris. He was educated in Hamburg and is fluent in French, German, English, and Arabic. He should be considered armed and dangerous. Osama bin Laden is the known leader and highest ranking member of the Al Qaeda terrorist organization. He is responsible for the funding, planning, and operation of the group, which has terror cells in over 50 countries. Bin Laden travels with an army of elite terrorist soldiers and should be considered armed and extremely dangerous. Abdullah bin Yassin is the known leader and highest ranking member of the Al Saif terrorist organization. He is responsible for the funding, planning and operation of the group, which has terror cells in over 50 countries. Bin Yassin travels with an army of elite terrorist soldiers and should be considered armed and extremely dangerous. Hostanek Drobek is alleged to have used securities fraud and money laundering to funnel millions of dollars to known terrorist groups, including Al-Qaeda. Drobek is trained in martial arts and should be considered extremely dangerous.
Charles Marcus has been linked to over 20 homicides in the Western United States. Several of Marcus's victims were targets of the Patriots, a militia group which supplies weapons and explosives to criminal organizations. Marcus works primarily as a contract killer for the Patriots and was last seen in Thunder Rock, Utah. Marcus should be considered armed and dangerous. Eduardo Carlos Perez is the head of the Perez drug cartel based on a private island in the Caribbean. Perez uses his drug money to purchase black market weapons and high-grade explosives. He is believed to be the middleman between the Patriots' bomb-making operation in Utah and Al-Qaeda terror cells in Paris. Perez is a frequent traveler to France and Spain. He's protected by an army of mercenary soldiers and should be considered extremely dangerous. Jamal Richardson was an accomplice in a series of murders and bank robberies perpetrated by the Biscayne Posse. Richardson held two hostages at gunpoint while they were executed by his partner, Casey Weber. Richardson should be considered armed and dangerous. Armando Rojas is the chief of security for Eduardo Perez's worldwide smuggling network. He personally oversees the majority of Perez's operations and has been linked to the Patriots militia group in Utah. Rojas should be considered armed and dangerous. Saddam Hussein needs no formal introduction. On December 13, 2003, the world thought America had captured the dictator. However, recent DNA testing proved a double was actually detained. With his crimes against humanity, Saddam is one of the most wanted fugitives in the world. Hussein is now believed to be hiding in a training camp just outside Jalalabad, Afghanistan. He is surrounded by an army of Al-Qaeda loyalists and should be considered extremely dangerous. Casey Weber was the key figure in a series of violent bank robberies that resulted in the death of two security guards and six hostages. His gang, the Biscayne Posse, is heavily armed with handguns, shotguns, and grenades. Weber is a methamphetamine addict and should be considered armed and extremely dangerous.
To use your inventory, press the Select button. You can also access inventory through the Pause screen. Your inventory is composed of three rings, Weapons, Items, and Ammo. Up and down selects different rings. Left and right selects your item, weapon, or ammo type. To invert your view, press the Start button to bring up the Pause menu. Select Game Options, then Invert View. To quickly turn around, double tap the R3 button. To level your view, press the L3 button and the R3 button together. This is great if you get disoriented. Press the square button to auto-target an enemy in your view. This will make shooting enemies much easier. Hold down the square button as you move around to stay locked on an enemy. The Enforcer pistol is your basic weapon. It can be augmented with a scope or silencer by selecting these from your inventory ring. The grenade launcher can launch different types of grenades. Red airburst grenades can be bounced around corners, down halls, then detonated by pressing the X button. Green homing missiles will seek out enemies automatically. They will home in on the last enemy painted red with your crosshair. Blue TV-guided grenades can be steered into your target with the right analog stick. To choose different grenade types, press the select button while holding the grenade launcher. This will bring up your ammo ring. To control the velocity and distance of your airburst grenades, press and hold the R2 button. You'll notice the small blue bar above your weapon readout will charge up accordingly. Experiment by releasing the R2 button at different times. The Dragon Flamethrower is great for close encounters. Press the R2 button to launch a portable fuel air bomb, ideal for cave cleaning. When you fire your secondary, the small blue bar above the weapon readout will be depleted and slowly recharge. Once it's full, you can fire again. The Attack Shotgun holds 10 round and has a fast reload. Press the R2 button to flash stun your enemies prior to capturing them. Use the Pamir Sniper Rifle for targets far away. Press the directional button up and down to zoom in and out. Press the directional button left and right to lean while sniping. The PN-10 Fletchet Gun is ideal for stunning fugitives. Once you stun them, get close and press the X button to capture the fugitives. You'll find other weapons out there, like double barrel shotguns, AK-74s, and RPGs. Press the R1 button to fire your weapon. Press the R2 button to fire your secondary weapon. Pressing the R2 button with certain weapons will initiate a close physical attack. You can use this to stun fugitives. Use the L1 button to jump. Use the L2 button to crouch. To lean left or right from a corner, Press the directional button left or right. Press the triangle button to switch weapons. Press the circle button to reload, the square button to lock on target, and the X button to interact with certain objects. Your left analog stick will move you forward, back, left, and right. Your right analog stick rotates your view. To check your objectives, press the Start button, then choose Mission Objectives. To stun the fugitive, press the R1 button to shoot him with your Fletchet Gun. To stun this guy, walk up to him and press the R2 button with your pistol. To stun this fugitive, press the R2 button with your Tack Shotgun.
them want it from me, I'm like ten of them Damn, see me huff, puff, blow, then I go again Flow again fast like a black Ferrari You should know I drop it like I'm in the army Play the game like nobody can harm me uh, Careful, careful when you
Thank you.